All right, guys, welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. This is Ali Plays, and uh, today we're going to be doing um, a request from one of the one of my subscribers. It requested I revisit Rotos now that I had a lot of time to uh, play around with him, and I actually use him a lot. So this was my last video on the screen, uh, Rotos Lost Room Build Guide review. So this video is going to be Rotos revisited. So I did actually change some things, and we will go over that right now. So Rotos is like. The best, in my opinion, Roto is the best fusion that we ever had, and he is very, very overpowered, and that's an understatement. So he's very good. He's a basic attack. He has a chance to grant an extra turn. Uh, he has a 30% chance, so it's very good to build this guy with a relentless set. His damage is based on attack and HP, so he does synergize with his uh, abilities, he with his vitality plunder ability. But let's go back to this ability. I feel like it is worth booking him out because you want him to do as much damage as he can, and he is actually a huge damage dealer. And then he actually had a stealth buff that Plarium actually did not acknowledge or say anything about. But I noticed it because my Rotos, um, I ran him through Ice Golem so many times and his, his damage just was just, it was pretty, his damage was pretty low compared to other Rotoses uh, when I was uh, using him. But then after the uh, the patch, after the patch, his damage was like way higher, like 200,000 damage uh, closer there. My Rotos never hit that hard, but now he actually is hitting very hard, even in Arena as well. He's doing much more damage. He has no issues uh, killing Torment teams. So he doesn't have a decreased defense, but he's actually doesn't need this ability at all. So this guy does not need any accuracy. He's not there for this ability. And I feel that like it is worth booking, but that's my opinion. Because I want him to do as much damage as he can. Vitality Plunder, as I said, he synergizes with himself. He does damage based on attack and HP. So this ability that when he uses it, he decreases the target's max HP by 20%. And then he adds that HP to his own max HP, uh, which actually makes him more durable as well as doing he's able to dish out some more damage and what's crazy about this is a two turn cooldown uh this is very good for dungeons as well it makes him very hard to kill uh you'll see him in dragon's lair and uh ice golem's peak he, he doesn't even die he might die in ice golem but in dragon's lair he doesn't die at all so he's very very hard to kill even in clan boss he's like one of the last champions that is um left standing because of this vitality plunder ability faded destruction this ability is very powerful he attacks one enemy and ignores 75% of the target's defense. So this is what kills Torment. This actually made Torment fall out of the meta. People don't use Torment as much. So this ignores unkillable and block damage. So this actually also drops Skull Crown out of the meta as well. And then right after he kills him, he grants himself an extra turn. And then uh, enemies cannot be revived with this skill. So that's where the Torment... Uh, so that's why he wrecks Torment right there. So he can he doesn't activate his passive because he cannot be revived. Uh, Skull Crown, she always plays his unkillables, he just ignores that. And yeah, he's also very good, man. Like, Duchess Little too, he... He does a very good champion, man. Especially if you pair this guy with Siffy, the Lost Bride. Yeah, so definitely book out this guy, max him out, he's very good. Um, his passive ability is pretty broken as well. He decreases damage from a single enemy hit, so that incoming damage will not exceed 50% of his max HP. Um, it can occur once per enemy attack. And he grants an extra turn if this damage reduction occurs, so right when he gets a big hit, he's gonna take a turn. So it doesn't, this does not work against bosses because that would be even more broken. And he decreases the damage taken from bosses by 15%. And he decreases the damage taken from bosses by 30%, I'm guessing, if Siffy the Lost Bride is on the same team. So they are very, very good combo together. So Rotos does actually have a weakness. His weakness is multi-hits. So if you have champions like Brachus, the Shifter, he was able to multi hit him multiple times. Um, also weak hits that are multiple hits like uh, Duchess Lilitu, Arbiter... Um, they can do a good job against him as well as uh, play champions that can place fear, uh, stun, freeze. So Torment actually does do a good job against him if he's able to survive that long. If he's controlled by the human, right? So if this is on defense, Torment has no chance because the, the he will be targeted first. So the AI doesn't really go after Torment first for Rotos AI. But yeah, Torment can actually do a good job against him uh, with his Iceberg Crush ability. So it is a double hit and it actually does a pretty good amount of damage. And also, Torment can provoke him, so he can't use his uh, A2 or A3 ability, but he might grant, grant himself an extra turn. And also, Torment can freeze him, so yeah. He does counter Torment if Torment is on defense, but if Torment is on offense, Torment can counter Rotos. Yeah, so he has a very good kit. Let's go over his uh, artifacts. So what I used to build in my old, old video is I actually had him with an Immortal set. So I had uh, one set of uh, Relentless, 
and one set of Immortal. So I switched it out to Cruel because I want me to do more damage. Subs as you're going to be looking for for Rotos is crit damage, crit rate. You got to get that 100% crit rate. Uh, attack percentage, speed. You actually want him to have some uh, decent speed, but you don't want to go out of your way, like uh, build him with speed sets. You don't want to do that because he does get turns. He gets a lot of turns, so he doesn't he try to build him as much. Uh, try to make him as strong as possible. That is the goal. Um, since he does do damage based on max HP, it's not a bad idea to have HP percentage as your sub stats. And for the gauntlets, it's hard to getting a relentless gauntlet that has an 80 percent crit damage. So 65% will have to do plus it has a 16% crit rate as a substat. So it's crazy. And we obviously go to attack percentage as the chest plate. And for the boots, we want with speed boots. Some people will go with uh, attack percentage boots, which is not a bad idea, but I don't have any issues killing uh, characters now. Accessories, I s stuck with HP primary on the ring because it actually has a 60% attack percentage Substat, so that is very good. Uh, crit damage primary on the amulet. I would prefer if that was six star, so I can get higher, higher crit damage percentage. And I went with uh, whatever has the most uh, speed on the substat. So let's take a look at total stats: thirty-one thousand HP. That actually does go up after he uses his uh, vitality plunder ability. Three thousand nine hundred twenty attack. One hundred seventy-one speed, which is actually pretty good if you have speed boosters in arena. 104% crit rate, 200% crit damage. I would actually prefer if that was higher, uh, which is possible, but it's going to take some time as I get relentless pieces and uh, the amulet that would probably bring it up to close to 200, 230, 240%, uh, which is better than 200%, obviously. 115 accuracy. We don't need accuracy. Resistance is not a bad idea to have for arena 143. Let's take a look at the mastery. So I didn't change anything for the masteries. I still went down to get Helm Smasher. So I have a 50% chance of ignoring 25% of the target's defense. He already does 75%, so he actually has a 50% chance of ignoring basically 100% of the target's defense. Uh, if you combine both of those abilities. So there is actually still a bug with Rotos. If you use War Master on him, sometimes his ability that his A3 does not ignore, uh, does not place block revive on the enemy or doesn't work on unkillable and stuff like that. Uh, I went down to get Retribution, which is very important to counterattack. It's because when he counterattacks, he has a chance to get an extra turn. And yeah, that's basically it for his masteries. I'm going to show you guys how he actually wrecks Torment. So we're actually going to go against this team, even though they are pretty easy and we are fast. So I'm going to run Arbiter, Duchess, uh, Rotos, and uh, Torment. We don't even need Torment. Yeah, but yeah, we're going to go over this team. So right, right off the bat, we're actually going to go right after Torment. So he does have a shield, so we're gonna actually going to try to go through that. There we go. 83,000 damage, went through the shield. And then the next character we're going to go after is Miscreate Monster. Um, we're going to try to use Vitality Plunder on him. So this is a very easy team for my team. Especially if I have uh, Rotos. If I don't have Rotos, and I just have Speed Boosters, um, without Duchess, we're, <laughs> we're going to lose that. I'm going to throw in on Auto now. Yeah, so you can see he dominates Torment. Torment has no chance against him other than if uh, if a person is controlling him. So I'm going to go against this team because I want to showcase how Brachis actually destroys Rotos, right? If he gets a turn, right? But I'm going to take out Torment because I know this team This team probably is faster than me. They have 221,000 power, probably mostly re from resistance. Um, and we're going to bring in somebody else, maybe Madame Cerise. And we're not going to speed boost because I want to show you guys his weakness. So who am I going to place here? We're not going to place Torment. That's what I said, right? Uh, we're just going to three man it. So this is a showcase that he he is actually uh, capable of dying, of losing, because he does have weaknesses. Let's see Brachis. If Brachis goes after him first, he's probably going to kill him, because he has like a quadruple hit or something like that. He's not going after him. <laughs> Dude, if I win this... <laughs> that would be hilarious. So we're going to go after Arbiter. Honestly, I don't even want to win it, but if I win it, that would be hilarious. There we go. Alright, so hopefully Brackets goes after Rotos. I just want to showcase him. 
Hmm. Couldn't showcase it. Sorry, guys. See, this is what I want to showcase. See all those hits? That's actually his weakness. All right, we're going to do one more battle, and then we're going to go ahead and throw him in dungeons. If you guys haven't seen that, I actually made a video of uh, trying to go 14 and 0 with Rotos and Arena. Just climbing, and it was it's a very entertaining video. You guys can go check that out on my channel. Seventy-nine thousand damage. I want to go again, so what I'm going to do is attack Zargala with a basic. Try to get an extra turn. There it is. We got the kill and an extra turn, and we're going to attack him with a basic. Try to get extra turns again. Nope. Uh, we're going to try to provoke Roto so he doesn't use his A3. There it is. Well, that's the issue though. He gets the extra turns on his basic. Thirty percent chance. So yeah, Duchess double hit is very good against him. See that. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it is very good against him. Uh, we're gonna try to place. We're gonna try to place fear on him. Fear is also his weakness. We couldn't do it. So now this guy's gonna go crazy, man. Double hit. And yeah, we're just gonna wipe him out. I wanted to showcase uh, Tormund wiping him out, but uh, whatever. So yeah, he is obviously very good in arena, very good on defense, very good on offense. Uh, he's just an annoying champion. Be careful if you're running against, facing off against a double Rotos uh, with a Siffy. That is a dangerous team. Faction Wars, he is very good. Let's see if the Faction Wars is here for Undead Hordes. No, it isn't. But I've actually gotten pretty far with him because he, he doesn't die, man. He's, he's very dangerous in Faction Wars. Clan Boss, I can't showcase him. I don't have any keys, but he generally does 5 million damage on, honestly, every single like Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare Brutal. He always does 5 million for me, so that is pretty good. He doesn't have any War Master on him uh, when he does that. And sometimes he goes like 10 times in a row if you want to manual it. Uh, just keep using his basic attack. So he's very good in the waves as well because if he kills some one of them, he's going to go again. So we're going to show the first round and then we're going to skip straight to the Ice Golem. Alright, so a minute to get to the Ice Golem, that's pretty fast. So what makes him very good in Ice Golem is not the, only the amount of damage that he does, but also that he can place block revives on the ad so they don't even come back to life. Which actually drastically reduces the, the, your um, your time. As long as he kills them, man. Come on, Rotos. A3, man. A3. <laughs> Alright, hopefully Rotos does his A3 on with this ad right here. There it is. Oh, only 155,000. He was pretty close to getting that block revive off. Yeah, it's all RNG. If it's on auto, it's, it's all RNG, like if he's going to get it or not. But if if you're manualing it, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys actually want to manual. But if you manual it, you can get these block revives off anytime you want. Because you can target whoever you want. So we're going to throw this on two times speed now. So 201,000 damage, guys. I had to stop that two times speed just for that. Anyways, the fight's almost over. Uh, you can see he does so much damage. It's not even funny, man. A lot of people are calling for him to be nerfed, but I don't want him to get nerfed, man. Just release a counter to him. There is a counter to him, but not a lot of people have brackets, but you can use Duchess Arbiter uh, just to whittle down his damage and then eventually kill him with a big hit. Uh, we're going to sell this. So he did 2.5 million damage, that's a lot. Uh, comparing Royal Guard, 1.1 million. He's, he's amazing, man. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go to Dragon's Lair. And we're gonna skip straight to the Dragon, just to show you how much damage he can do there. All right, so it took us like a minute to get there. Uh, usually it's faster than that, but because I am using Rotos, I usually use Lenoral in that spot because I run her with Zavia, and they are actually a pretty good combo. But yeah, he will actually help out your team. I mean, you can't you can't fuse him anymore. But maybe if you get lucky and pull him, yeah, let's see how much damage you can do. 
60,000 extra turn, Vitality Plunder, 100k extra turn, 100k again. The thing is, you don't have to build them with a Relentless set. If you have a Cruel set, you can build them a whole Cruel set. And you'll be good. You probably even do more damage than mine. Relentless is like a, a, he's a gamble, 18% chance to grant an extra turn. I mean, it is very good with this kit, but you don't have to have it. There we go. Let's see how much damage he did compared to Zavia. So Zavia did 2.2 mil. He did 1 mil. She actually does AoEs. So that's actually pretty impressive that a single target champion did 1 million damage. Uh, he can hold his own, definitely. So we're actually not going to go into Fire Knight's Castle, but I can tell you some a few things about it. So in Fire Knight's Castle, I think he is underrated in Fire Knight's Castle because he can actually grab himself extra turn, but it is RNG. So you can actually keep keep hitting the shield. And once the shield goes down, he's going to be doing massive damage. So I think he is he's better than people think he is in Fire Knight's Castle. Uh, Spider Den, I don't think he is that good. I mean, he's going to be he's going to be hitting the spider for some massive damage, but that's about it. Uh, he doesn't help with term meter manipulation. Um, he's probably I don't know how he his AI works, but he might be. No, he'd probably go after the spider spider queen. So he actually might not be that bad in spider's den. You know what? Just for science, we're actually going to go ahead and throw him in spider's den. So we're going to use Rotos in place of uh, another royal guard, <laughs> which is not a good idea, but whatever. So let's see how his AI works in spider's den 20. Another thing I forgot to mention that in, in Fire Knight, he is going to be uh, Affinity Disadvantage because he is magic, just like Royal Guard. Royal Guard would be much better if he wasn't uh, magic for for Fire Knight. Maybe I should take Cold Heart out instead of uh, Royal Guard. Yeah, Royal Colhard's gonna die, I think. No, he's creative, man. Hard carry. All right, let's go, Roto. So let's show some damage, man. Take multiple turns. Let's go. 119,000 damage. Um, that's actually pretty low because he usually hits uh, closer to 200k on that ability. So we're gonna throw this on two times speed now. All right, so you can see that Rotos actually did slow down my run. <laughs> he did 1.4 mil, but having the other Royal Guard is obviously much better. But I just want to showcase him. This Royal Guard is 7 million damage, so that's how much we were missing. Obviously, he's not going to do 7 million, but they do um, a lot of damage together. But yeah, Rotos is not designed for for Spider, but he did he did do a pretty good, decent amount of damage. Uh, but enemy max HP abilities are much better for Spider or HP burn, uh, things like that. So we're going to go over his reviews now, how I rated him before. Um, I rated him 5 out of 5 in Arena, I do agree with that. I just going to peek, he is a 5 out of 5. Clan boss, I gave him a 4. Um, honestly, I, I would actually give him a 5, he is very good, he takes multiple hits. If you build with War Master, he do even more damage, so I do change that. So clan boss, he is a 5 now. Defense, he's a 5. Dragon's Lair, he's a 5, I had that as a 5. Minotaur's Labyrinth, he's a 5 for sure. Campaign locations. I wrote him, I had him as very good. He's not a campaign speed farmer. But the thing is though, you can actually use this guy in, um, you can use this guy in nightmare, nightmare campaign, but he's not a speed farmer. So that's the reason I'm gonna give him a five now. Faction Wars, he's a five, that's for sure. Magic keep five, spirit keep five. I'm guessing I gave him five on all the keeps. Spatter's Den, I gave him a three. So yeah, I guess three is good. Farnax Castle, I gave him a three, but I'm gonna bump that up to a four because of how many turns he can take. And also he can decrease the max HP of the Fire Knight, which actually does work. 
And also, he can deal massive damage on him. So I'm going to give him a 4 now for Fire Knights. Uh, force Keep, I'm going to keep that as a 4. Because it is a uh, affinity disadvantage. And also, if he didn't have affinity disadvantage, I would actually might I might throw that up to a 5. Might. Recommend artifacts. Uh, yeah, I guess that's okay. I would go with crit damage gloves though. So we're going to accept that. Yeah, guys, so not a lot of things changed regarding Roto since my last guide. Um, other than he actually does more damage now than he did before. I don't know what Plarium did uh, to his stealth buffed him. I don't know if they even know they did that. It's not just me, man. A lot of people will actually reach out to me and told me that, oh, Ro check out Rotos, man. This guy's doing more damage now. So yeah, that's going to be it for the video. Rotos is amazing. If you guys have Rotos, make sure you guys work on him. Uh, you guys are probably well aware of that already. And uh, for the person that, that requested that I do this video, there you go, man. So if you guys have any other requests for videos, let me down in the comment section. If you guys want me to redo any other guides uh, for 2020, obviously some guys are still outdated. Uh, like my Nizana guide. Lenral guide is also outdated. I have to do that as well. So I do have a lot of outdated guides. And I will, I will, if you guys want, I will kind of actually uh, work on them. So as always, if you guys like this video, make sure you guys like the video. It helps me out a lot. And I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.